This is the Night Radio Show. Yo, 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 Wobble Woosh in the house. Today we got for all your fans out there some snippets of no one would ever talk about on a radio show. Today is a special current event episode. On Sunday, March 15, I got a Google Classroom notification from my filming teacher. Let's call him Patsy Haggard. The post said, Hey everyone, classes are cancelled for the following week until further notice. This comes from the chief medical officer. Please do not come to school this week. As you may still need to hand in and finish assignments, they will all be due last week. So do what you can if you're not done from home. I will assign nothing more till after spring break, if classes resume by then, to elevate the workload you may have from core classes. Please stay safe and healthy out there, Mr. Haggard. And then there's a link to a CTV news article. Students are expected to stay home. Alberta schools, daycares to close over COVID-19 by Karen Mulcahy. The provincial government will close down all schools and daycares and will enforce cancellations of in-person classes at colleges and universities due to the threat of COVID-19. However, school faculty will be expected to keep working like normal. I think that this horrible disease is f***ing up everything we had planned like concerts. My mommy is calling it the travel disease. I also got an early vacation from school. So who started this epic pandemic? And will there ever be a stable vaccine to treat this? We'll answer these questions in this current event special after these wondrous messages. Peace! Family fun. The top answer guessing game where we throw tomatoes at the losers! Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! We have floppers, door jammers, and jet cars. Finalists in this drag race will compete for cash. 500 horsepower, 1,000 horsepower, and even 5,000 horsepower. They will be tearing up the quarter mile drag strip all day long. There will be a special autograph session, so don't forget to bring your autograph book. There will be burgers, hot dogs, pop, and coffee, all conveniently located at the concession stand. Gates open at 9, with qualifying at 10.30. Drag racing will start at noon. Kids under 10 get in free. Adults get in for $15 or bring the whole family for $25. Bring your camera and some sunblock. Vote for your favorite drag racers to win prizes. This is sure to be the summer's best entertainment. All this on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. You're back with the All Night Radio Show. Let's start with the biggest question of all. Who's really at fault? The logical answer is China, because they had decided to farm weird animals, such as bats and snakes. But a possible answer could be all of humanity for spreading it. Or it could have been every living organism for spreading it. But for now, due to time, let's stick with the logical answer. I found a few articles on this question, so let us begin. Article 1. First COVID-19 case happened in November, China government records show by Helen Davidson in Hong Kong. On November 17, 2019, the very first case of this illness had occurred. This was before there was over 250 cases, which is when the Chinese government had declared the emergence of the illness. The Chinese government was supposedly trying to hide this for the weeks before the announcement of the SARS-like illness, in which had started to spread throughout the city of Wuhan. Jumping ahead, the illness has reached just under 130,000 people throughout the entire world so far. It has killed just over 4,700. On the bright side, over 68,000 have overcome the illness. Article 2. Coronavirus closures reveal vast scale of China's secretive wildlife farm industry by Michael Sandert in Shenzhen. Almost 20,000 farms, which had various species of peacocks, porcupines, and wild boars, were closed down during the exposure of the outbreak, which had exposed the extreme size of the industry. The illness is said to have started through wildlife being sold at a food market in Wuhan during the months of December, which had given the opportunity to think about changing this way of trade. For a few years before this incident, however, 
China's leadership had recommended the idea that wildlife domestication was an essential part of the rural development, ecotourism, and poverty prevention. Weeks before the uprising of the illness, the SFGA was still enforcing citizens of China to keep farming wildlife. Civet cats are known to be a carrier of the SARS disease, which were still being farmed at the time. Also, people in China were still farming and eating the civet cat after the SARS illness came to light. And I'm pretty sure they haven't stopped eating the animal yet. Ew. <laughs> Article 3. China is avoiding blame by trolling the world by Shadi Hami. When the first case of COVID-19 came to light, the WHO deliberately avoided associating China as the source of the outbreak. Very irresponsible. China has been known to be the country that mishandles outbreaks like SARS. Nicholas D. Kristoff from the New York Times wrote, Act decisively, they did. Not against the virus, but against whistleblowers who are trying to call attention to the public health threat. China's decision to not announce or take action to the illness immediately is the thing that had caused it to spread quickly. The Chinese government had just started taking action by committing a lockdown on the city on January 23, 2020. But then, Mayor Zhu Zan Wang had announced that over 5 million people had already left Wuhan, commencing the beginning of the national spread. There were also some future told articles from 2007 and early 2019 about there being more diseases to be sourced from domestic bats. Will they ever learn their lesson? Most likely not. We'll be back with the next question after these cool messages. Peace! You're back with the All Night Radio Show. Here's our final question. Will there ever be a vaccine to treat this illness soon? Let's find out! Article 4. When will a coronavirus vaccine be ready? By Laura Finney. Over 30 companies and institutions are trying to figure out a stable vaccine for this horrible illness. At least four of those institutions have prototypes ready to be tested on animals, one of which is ready to be tested on a human, which may be sometime this spring. In January, China had released their depiction of the theory for a vaccine to research groups, who later then grew and studied the illness. This has caused people to try and make a vaccine more rapidly. Another reason for the rapid working is that vaccinologists were also making vaccines for variations of the illness, most likely just in case there were ever to be another outbreak. It had happened, and they were right to theorize a variation of the original vaccine. This new illness of COVID-19 was also in previous forms and were also epic pandemics. SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, and MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. We'll be back with a cool insight note after these mofo messages. Peace! Is your air conditioner not working? Does your furnace or boiler make noise? Then you need RVA Mechanical. At RVA Mechanical, you can get it all. They service and install all makes and more, so you can relax with confidence. From equipment tune-ups to appliance replacements, they can do it all, and on budget, so you can rest in comfort. Affordable service to match your wallet, 24-hour citywide services, so you can breathe easier. So the next time you need a tune-up or repair, remember, RBA Mechanical at 780-474-7481. One call gets it all. You're back with the All Night Radio Show. Here's a cool note. What services can COVID-19 be on and for how long? 
My mommy told me that it can't be on paper for more than a few hours because of all those little pores in it. And also, can't be on copper because it incinerates immediately. Well, it can't be on copper. So if you just wore copper armor all day, you'd be perfectly safe. Article 5. How long does coronavirus last on services? By Susanna Lyons. On the bright side, an illness cannot physically reproduce unless it is in another cell. In a study, the illness was not shown on copper surfaces after four hours and was also no more than one day on cardboard, but it can be on stainless steel and plastic for about three days. There may be a lower chance of getting the illness from surfaces than from breathing on people. To protect yourself from this horrible illness, just wash your adorable little hands and don't breathe on or let anyone breathe on you or others. Or you can just wear copper. And if people are bombarding you with all this overwhelming information, just do what I do and look for the good side. If there's still no vaccine by July or August, look for the good side of the world, like local cuisine or cultural dances or fun local craft events. If you feel overwhelmed, it's okay, we all feel that way. It will be over soon. The Black Plague has ended, and so did smallpox, and eventually COVID-19 will end. We just have to wait a bit. This epic pandemic will end soon. Or should I say, epic-demic? <laughs> I also got some more notifications from my other teachers, Alan Bifford, Missy Richards, and Donald Nathaniel on Google Classroom, saying similar things as well. Well, who do you think is at fault? Tell us in the comments. Hey, yo, peeps. This has been the All Night Radio Show. If you like this radio show, punch that like button in the face like a boss. Thank you and goodbye. Ow!